In this question, we're given an AM signal, and we're, to we're told that the signal is a single tone signal. So the input message is a single tone sine wave. And we're given the frequency of the message. And the question is, what is the carrier frequency? So given the message frequency is 5 kilohertz, the question is, what is the message frequency? Sorry, the carrier frequency. So the carrier frequency is the frequency of this blue signal here. And it's clearly higher than the signal of the message, but how much higher? So there's no annotation, there's no scale on the time axis. So we're unable to measure the period, and therefore we're unable to measure the frequency. But what we can do is measure the uh, ratio of this period, the period of my message, and the period of my carrier wave. So I can count how many peaks there are, how many blue peaks, how many carrier peaks there are in one period of the message. So if I start from here, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then I'm back to the beginning again. So there's ten carriers or ten carrier cycles in every message cycle. So if the period is 10 times smaller, then the frequency is 10 times higher. So I can say it's simply 10 times the message frequency. So it's 50 kilohertz. So that's a handy, a handy trick to be able to find the relationship between the carrier frequency and the message frequency simply by counting the number of peaks. In practice, for a real AM broadcast, obviously that would be impossible because you wouldn't have 10 peaks, you would have perhaps 50 or 100 or 200 peaks. Now the next part of the question says, find the modulation index. So we're trying to find the depth of modulation, M. So finding the modulation index, we're no longer interested in frequencies, we're interested in amplitudes. So we are interested in the depth of modulation. So we're interested in particular in these two numbers. We're interested in the maximum amplitude and the minimum amplitude and the difference between the two. So if we call that the maximum amplitude and this the minimum amplitude, then the modulation index is simply the ratio of the difference to the sum of these two. So it's A max minus A min divided by A max plus A min. So in this case, it's 5 minus 2 over 5 plus 2. So it's 3 over 7. That's my modulation index. I can leave it as a fraction, or I can write it as 0 0.43, or I can say it's 43%. Part C says, what percentage of the total power is contained within the sidebands? Now remember, the AM signal contains sidebands and contains the carrier. So the total power is the carrier power plus the sideband power. The useful power in terms of information or message is the sideband power. And the question here is asking, what's what percentage of the total power is in the sidebands? So in other words, it's saying, What's the power in the sidebands divided by the total power times 100%? 
That's the question. And that is the definition of the efficiency. So the question is actually asking for the efficiency. Because what percentage of the total power is contained within the sidebands? That's the definition of efficiency. And we have an expression for that. So efficiency is simply m squared over m squared plus 2. Where m is our modulation index. It's what we just calculated. So you can do the maths. It's 3 over 7 squared over 3 over 7 squared plus 2. And that gives you 8.4%. So remember, they're asking for a percentage. So you need to multiply by 100. So the next part asks for a spectrum sketch. So sketch the spectrum of AM. Then explain why it's called DSB-LC. So let's sketch the spectrum and then the explanation will become perhaps more obvious. So spectrum means a frequency plot. And we have a carrier term at 50 kilohertz. So if we see this is the axis in kilohertz. We also have an upper sideband and a lower sideband. Now, because we're told that the message is a, a single tone sine wave, we'd actually draw the message like that, rather than a continuous spectrum. So let me label this. This is my carrier term. And this is the upper sideband, and that's the lower sideband. Now, the sketch to be complete, I would have to label this as 55, and this is 45. So just to be really clear, that's my carrier frequency. That's my carrier frequency plus the message frequency, and that's the carrier frequency minus the message frequency. So we have two side bands on either side of the carrier. Now it says explain why this form of modulation is referred to as DSB-LC. Well, the D is for double sideband, and because I have an upper and a lower sideband, it's called double sideband. And the LC is for large carrier. So you can see the, the amplitude of the carrier is considerably larger than the amplitude of the um, sidebands. I haven't drawn the um, uh, spectrum to scale. It just says sketch a spectrum. I've sketched the spectrum, but it isn't to scale. To scale, I would need to take into account the modulation index here. But I haven't done that. The next part of the question says, suggest a value for the time constant for an envelope detector. So if we had an envelope detector, so if we had a diode and then a capacitor and a resistor, so what is the suitable value for the time constant? So the question isn't asking for component values, it's not asking for resistance values or capacitor values, but it wants to know what is a suitable product so that the envelope detector will be able to uh, trace these peaks. So we want the capacitor to be able to discharge at a rate that allows this envelope here to be um, traced suitably. So what I've drawn isn't a very good approximation, but that's what our capacitor should be able to do. So if our time constant is too large, then you would have slow discharge, and that would miss out 
um, bits of the signal. And if the, um, the time constant was too high, too short, sorry, then it would discharge too fast and you'd have deeper ripples, so a greater distortive effect. So, to um, choose a time constant, we say that RC is somewhere between 1 over FM and 1 over FC. So this is your message frequency, which is um, 5 kilohertz, so 1 over 5,000 and 1 over the carrier frequency, which we calculated to be 50,000. So you end up with RC being something between 1 over 5,000 is 0 0.2 seconds and 1 over 50,000 is 0 0.02 seconds. So choose anything suitably far away from these two limits. So say RC is something like 0 0.1 seconds or 0 0.05 seconds. That should be fine. So um, the question isn't asking for component values, but it's asking for a time constant. And this is a suitable time constant limited by my carrier frequency and um, message frequency. So that's the final answer for part E relating to an AM signal and an envelope detector.